Tom, welcome to the World Massage Conference. Oh, thanks very much, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. And despite what I said, I don't think we're going to discover the star of, of death. I think it's the star of depth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hope we're going for. <laughs> so my apologies there. I'm, I'm very curious to hear about that. Okay, so uh, you have a presentation prepared for us. I do. On, on this topic, which should be fascinating. Uh, so I'm just going to pass the mic over to you and uh, and let you go. All right. I, I uh, did want to say feel free to uh, step in if there's something on this that you want me to go into a little more. Absolutely. Um, and I'm hoping that most of our listeners are able to access the slideshow because that's what I'm going to be working off of. Um, are we on slide number one now? Yep. Well, good. I think people have got that. Then let's go to number two. Um, to, to, to get into the depth of the body is something that is uh, worth taking the years to do, and it does take a while to really get past the superficial into the deep. Um, my own particular realm, which of course is what I can talk about, people have depth in all different kinds of body work, uh, so I'm just going to talk about it in the way that I've gone into it, which is um, reaching literally into the body's tissues. And there's a conundrum in going deep. In, there's two conundrums in going deep. One is the literal physical one, which we'll get into in a little bit, which is how do I get my hands into deep tissues and affect deep tissues and still stay sensitive? Um, there are a lot of people who can maul their way into deep tissues, and there are a lot of people who can feel a lot on the surface, but the conundrum of deep work is how do you get in deep and stay sensitive? We're going to play with that a little bit. Um, but let's, uh, in, in slide two, it's what shape are you in? I'm going to read the slides from right to left. The uh, girl on the right-hand side, um, before and after treatment, you can see that her shape is changed. Um, it happens to be uh, rolfing that she had structural integration that she had from um, left to right. But if you look at the shape that she's taking um, on the left, the knees are held back into hyperextension, and that requires the rest of the spine to act in a particular way. So regardless of the problem that she comes in with, low back pain, neck pain, her mother doesn't like her posture or whatever, uh, sends her that way in the first place, the... Um, in order to get her spine to work more easily and her shoulders to sit more uh, easily and her breathing to be more full, you really have to change the knees. It's this kind of uh, thinking holistically. In fact, if we were to go from the knees to the ankles, if you look at her ankles, they're chronically plantar flex, so even to be able to change the knees, you need to be able to uh, ease off her plantar flexors in her lower leg. So it becomes whatever the local problem is becomes uh, a whole problem, a whole body problem that has to be considered that way. If we turn to the to the middle picture, you see those dancers, they are shaping themselves uh, in particular ways. We're going to go into what shapes this as well. And uh, a little hard to see on that um, skull on the left, but I happen to know because I saw the person who took that photograph, uh, that that was the most symmetrical skull they could find. But if you look at it, uh, even though it's small, you can see that the person chewed on the right side, that it's uh, the whole jaw structure is shorter on the right side and that the nasal septum is deviated over to the right side. So even that, even the most um, symmetrical person that they could find has asymmetries in it. So I would say that we need a medicine of shape and that most of the people who are listening are participating in that medicine of shape in doing uh, whatever kind of massage they do because I would... I would say a medicine of shape is not only changing the literal physical shape, as we see in these pictures, but changing the perception of how we are inside ourselves, how, how we perceive our own shape. So if we could go to slide three, we'd see a um, an early attempt at shaping, um, making a better person through reshaping them. Uh, I'm, I'm deliberately using that arrogant term of, of making a better person. That's the idea in yoga. Um, is to um, change how the person is by changing how they shape themselves inside their body. So this is, uh, depending on how you do it, hundreds and, and probably thousands of years old, these asanas that were used to change people's shape. If we go to slide four, you see one of the early uh, people in America to organize 
the changing of shape. Dr. Andrew Taylor still, um, after his daughter died, um, he, in, in, in his frustration, uh, took up the techniques of bone setters who uh, used to go around this country setting people 